Get your hands out where we can see them! From everything that happened today, and I've been with this thing the whole time, you're a risk to us. But you shot at my partners today. Additional charges may be filed against a suspect accused of leading police on a different chase and ramming at least two vehicles along southbound I-494. Bradley Michael Olson. Throughout this video, you will experience the actions this man took during his life of crime. Each offense Olson commits is more severe than the last. In December of 2007, Olson was charged with the possession of THC his first offense at only 17 years old. After his possession of THC, it wouldn't take long for him to be charged for trespassing, burglary, theft, dealing drugs, possession of methamphetamines, OWIs, battery, domestic abuse, and eventually, theft of motor vehicles. For many of these crimes, Olsen had a habit of bail jumping. In 2013, Olsen would further degrade his own reputation by fleeing officers with stolen vehicles. While on that probation in 2015, Olsen committed a crime that was disturbing enough for its own news segment. Police began pursuing Olsen late Thursday afternoon after a call about two men trying to break into a home in Rogers. After a chase that reached speeds of up to 115 miles an hour, Olsen eventually crashed on I-494 in Plymouth, rolling his SUV four times. The driver did give a statement in the hospital that one of the reasons he drove as unsafe as he did is he knew that police departments typically will discontinue a chase when the conditions get dangerous. Chief Bean says until they got to 494, traffic was unusually light. He says if it had gone on much longer, they probably would have discontinued the pursuit. During the chase, police say drugs and other items were thrown out the window. Court records show Olson was previously convicted of fleeing police. Before that incident, Olson was sentenced to 17 months in the Minnesota Correctional Facility. However, that sentence was also stayed and Olson was once again set to serve five years probation instead. But he was back at it in 2020. In this incident, police reports indicate that Olson fired a weapon at police officers through the rear window of the vehicle he was driving. At this time, Olson was with a female passenger. <laughs> Get up there! Get up there! He's shooting! He's shooting! Stop! Female coming out, female coming out, coming male out. still in the car. Driver! Come on with your hands up! We don't want you to get hurt, bro! We don't want you to get hurt, bro! We can finish this decent life! Come on now! Is it a handgun, Todd? I can't see what this guy could be. I can hear these guys firing. I never heard the shots. On LTAC, it was handgun, okay. according to the female in the car. 
The standoff continues for several moments before police decide the best course of action is to drive an armored truck towards Olsen to avoid escalation of a gunfight. Soon enough, they are able to detain Olsen and bring him directly into an interrogation room for further questioning. From everything that happened today, and I've been with this thing the whole time, you're a risk to us. You're a flight risk, okay? You're a risk to hurt yourself. That's the risk, I think. But you shot at my partners today. Can I please get something to drink or eat? I, the hospital didn't have to eat me or give me anything to drink. We don't have the authority to give you anything, but there'll be somebody up here pretty soon, a detective. We'll ask them when they get up here, okay? During the interrogation, Olsen specifically requests milk on multiple occasions. The officers' continued denial and failure to provide this over the course of over two and a half hours can actually hurt their case in court. Police will go as far as providing fast food orders for those they know have committed murders, even if there is video evidence, like the mass murderer Dylan Roof. Here's a couple of juices. You come find milk for water. I've been shooting my entire life, and I'm going to say this much. Like, I don't point something at somebody that's you're going to kill it. So you shot a couple times while you were driving just to like try to get them to back off or something? That's, that was your idea? Yeah, sometimes it doesn't work. Okay, how much meth is going to be in the truck then right now? Um, like an ounce or more than an ounce or less than an ounce? I don't know, I dumped more than that. How do you feel, how do you feel about what happened today? Better make this better. Mm, bail. Well, they'll determine that too. Yeah, a judge sets bail. I couldn't even guess as to what that may be. It's so frankly, it's not up to us. So a judge could look at the case and toss it out and say, nope, this is a bunch of bull. Or they could set bail really high. They could say, not, you know, in the middle. I, I don't know. Unfortunately, the court system laid trust in Olson after this incident, despite his pattern of bail jumping and repeated offenses. Mary Yunker, a judge appointed by GOP Governor Tim Pawlenty, set Olson's bail at $250,000. Olson soon paid through a bail bond company. Following his own pattern, Olson failed to show up eight days later to the court for his case, and a warrant was issued for his arrest. Eventually, police discovered him, and a chase ensued, one that put police and citizens alike in a deadly situation. For this chase, Olson again had his female companion with him named Megan. Based on witness interviews, it appears Olsen started fleeing police in a blue truck with stolen plates. When he noticed a police officer was following him, he took off. According to news and witness reports, in an attempt to evade police, Olsen allegedly left the truck he was in at an intersection and threatened citizen vehicles at gunpoint in an attempt to carjack them. And he had a 9mm gun pointed right at us. I don't know, I'll just say this much, like, I don't point something at somebody that's going to kill it. And he basically said, get out of the vehicle. Mm -hmm. I was shaking my head no and telling him we were not going to get out of the vehicle. We were stopped. Christine had her foot on the, the brake, but it was still in gear. The next second I know, he's around the side of the vehicle on Christine's side, the driver's side, and he is pulling on her door handle, screaming at her to open up the vehicle. I continue to ask Christine to put it in reverse. At that point, the truck that he had uh, gotten out of was rolling back towards us. And while it was rolling back towards us, a female tried to e exit the passenger side of the truck. She appeared to have her arms, you know, loaded with stuff. And because mm -hmm. the truck was rolling backwards, when she got out, she fell to the ground. Okay. When she fell to the ground, he turned to look at her and Christine hit the gas and uh, we sped backwards into the intersection and as soon as we were into the intersection, she was going uh, east on the westbound lane, but um, she just wanted to get up as close to the yeah. police as she possibly could. After that altercation, it is reported that Olsen then fled and entered a nearby restaurant. The manager of that restaurant recounts what happened in this audio interview. There was an individual who walked by the front doors and looked into the windows, as opposed to coming straight into the restaurant. It concerned me, so I told the host to let me know if the individual actually decides to come into the restaurant. And did they? Yes, he did. Okay. He came in. The hosts were not at that moment up there. He turned the corner and asked CC, our bartender, for a ride, and he would pay for it. She immediately went to go get me. By the time I walked out from the back area, he had already picked up the keys from the table 
of the victim. When Olson fled the restaurant, he drove towards a nearby highway. The following footage is what's available from that chase. Shots fired, shots fired. He shot at 42 and 35 WMS. Shooting out of the back window. Back window shot all the One suspect down at this point. S42, we need medics code 3, highway 13 at, at 35W. Get a medic bag! Get a medic bag! We good? Block, block that! Cover the squad car! Cover the squad car! Open. Is that car cleared? No! It's stolen, I got it, cool. This is clear. Riley, I'm back on my phone. Number. 45 S42. We need both lanes at 35. Correction, Highway 13 shut down. We copy. We have men out. State patrol route shut down the highway both directions. Copy that. I can't see anything. Do we have medics staged? Med medics are in road. Copy. Get your hands out where we can see them! Do it now! Do it now! Get your hands out where we can see them! Do it now! I got rifle, I'm on him. See him back. No, we're good. We're not approaching. We don't know where that gun is yet. Can anybody see that gun? Negative. I think it's on the other side of it. Copy. All officers are okay. Giving commands to the suspect. 15 one. Sir, we want to provide you help. You got to throw your gun out. Get your hands up. Get your hands up so we can see them. Go. Earth the police. Show us your hand. Earth the police. Hey, this is good. Stop. 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 Right there. Stop. Hold. I got him from here. I got him. Do we see breath movements yet? No. Let's go. Let's go for sure. Let's move forward slower, yep. Yeah. Slower. Let's keep going slow. Okay. Stop. Guns to the left. Guns right to the left. Front. Let's pay it up. Anybody got cuff? I got. Medic bag. Love up. Love up. 
45 S42, we have one detained at this time. Medics are cleared in. They can come down eastbound uh, Highway 13. It's all clear to get it blocked off. That'd be the quickest route for the fire department. After that incident, police questions Olson's supposed companion, Megan, for more information. Can you help us understand kind of what happened today? Yeah. You know, I remember the last time, and I believe it was in November when the last time happened, he, he was pretty high. Was he using again today? No, today he was um today he was not really high. Um, not really high. I'm so scared to talk about it. What what's making you scared? You, let me see if I'm understanding. Are you worried about talking and telling us too much about Bradley because you you're afraid of what he may do? Yeah. Okay. Megan, what, what has what, what's what information do you know as you sit here right now about where Bradley is? I just know that he's in custody. Okay. Well, I, I'm i sorry to be the one to tell you this, but he, he actually passed away from the shooting. What? Yeah, I'm sorry if nobody told you that, but he's, he's dead. I'm sorry. Oh, my God. He was, he was pretty abusive. So... But he was very aggressive and physical, especially like near the end, it got worse. After his eventual demise, Olsen's reign of crimes came to an end, and at any point he could have chosen to turn his life around, not just for himself, but for any family members or friends who wanted the best for him.